Welcome to The Schoolyard, the show where we break down some of history's most unknown historical figures of color. Today we ask, who was Robert Smalls? Robert Smalls was a congressman who escaped slavery by posing as a captain on a Confederate supply ship during the Civil War. Smalls was born April 5, 1839 in Beaufort, South Carolina. His father, although officially unknown, was said to have been his plantation master, John K. McKee. This granted Smalls favoritism amongst the community. His mother Lydia didn't approve of his more privileged lifestyle, fearing that his complacency would blind him from the cruelty of slavery. It was with a heavy heart that she would force him to endure every aspect of slavery, even going as far as exposing him to the whippings of other slaves. His exposure to the horrors of slavery would fuel his rebellious nature. Several times, the plantation owner McKee would have to bail him out of the Beaufort jail due to his defiance. Lydia's plan of direct exposure had worked all too well, but she soon feared for her son's life and asked for him to be sent somewhere where he could build a life and not destroy it. At the age of 12, McKee sent Smalls away to Charleston to work as a shiprigger and a waiter. Unfortunately, Lydia, his mother, was sold while he was away he would never see her again. He worked several jobs in Charleston and was paid a pretty decent wage, but he was only allowed to keep a dollar a week. That's right, one dollar per week, which is about $28 today. The rest would be sent off to McKee. Smalls eventually got the opportunity to work on the planner, a Confederate transport steamer. He fell in love with the idea of becoming a sailor with the dream of one day sailing towards freedom. In 1858, Smalls met and married Hannah Jones, a slave girl who worked at the Charleston Hotel. They had two children together, but because of slave laws, they were unable to live with one another. They had to request permission from their masters, the McKees and the Kingmans. Permission was granted to them to live in a small apartment in Charleston, but they remained slaves. The Kingmans could take Hannah and his children in the blink of an eye for any reason. Small sought out their freedom and the Kingmans agreed to sell his wife and his children to him for an insane price of $800, which is a little over $22,000 by today's standards. At the time, he only had $100 to his name, so he would have to find another way. In May of 1862, the opportune moment would finally present itself. At the dawn of the Civil War, the planter, the ship that Smalls had worked on since his teenage years, was being used to transport guns, ammunition, and important documents to Confederates. His plan was to take the ship, pose as its captain, and sell his family and 12 other slaves away from Charleston and towards freedom. On the night of May 12th, the white officers decided to sleep in town. Smalls wasted no time preparing the ship for departure. This daring escape led through several Confederate checkpoints where he would have to give the right signal for each. If caught, he and the other passengers were willing to go down with the fight. The Yankee ship, the USS Onward, was the first to spot the Confederate ship and nearly fired at Smalls until they saw the waving of the white bed sheet, the signal for surrender. The planter and its contents were given to the Yankees and Smalls, his family, and the other slaves were soon granted their freedom. In one fateful night, Smalls risked everything to free his family and the family of his crew. His endeavor was recognized by Abraham Lincoln, which became one of the many factors that encouraged him to authorize free blacks to serve in the Union military. Smalls would join the military himself, eventually becoming a Union Navy captain, conducting several missions near Charleston. He also had a stint in politics, getting elected in the South Carolina House of Representatives and serving as a congressman from 1868 to 1869. He returned to Beaufort and bought the very house in which he was a slave. He remained there until his death at the age of 75. It goes without saying that Smalls died a hero. Thanks for hanging out with us at the schoolyard. If you enjoyed finding out who's who, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment if you'd like to suggest someone for a future video. Peace and love, thanks for watching.